Candy corn. Ew. It's out. I don't like that stuff. It's out in the stores. It's gross. It's just congealed it's p- sugar with food coloring. But it's pretty. I guess. That's why people buy it, because it's pretty. If you take candy corn and stack it in like a little circle, eventually it will make a corn cob. What do you mean? What do you mean? They're kernels, like candy, like corn. Oh, I never thought of that. Are you sure? Yep. I it's saw, like a, I saw it on the internet. It must be true. You mean it's a vegetable? Candy corn's a vegetable? I'm not going to go that far. I don't like the stuff. Although, you know what? There's something satisfying about the consistency or the texture of it, even though I hate it. One of my kids really likes it, and so I'll take one every once in a while and just, you know, bite off the tip and have it. Hmm. Okay. All right, we promised we were going to be better today and introduce the show and, and thank our sponsors and stuff mm-hmm. because I got guilted. I, every morning when I drive, I can't get this station at my house, but driving my kid to Sharon Academy every day, it's usually the only station that comes in in the car, so we listen to it. And I listen to all the other DJs in the morning, how nice of a job they mm-hmm. do thanking mm-hmm. everyone and sounding so professional and they don't stutter and say like every five seconds like I do. Mm-hmm. Bob in particular, I was listening to this morning. Yeah. Yeah. He's just so good. Bob's a pro. Bob is such a so pro. So is Courtney. I know. Where did they get this? I, I mean, don't know. you and I are some of the longest DJs that have been here. Yes. And we're still as haphazard as we were on the day we started. Yes. For better or worse. <laughs> no, okay. We're less, we're not as self conscious. Because I, if I listen to our very early shows, they're incredibly cringy. But they're cringy now, well, just in a different way. But I think before we felt like we had to perform a public service, you know. Right, and we've just given that yeah. idea up. We gave up <laughs> on it, and nobody seemed we've to care. We've embraced our slacker DJ-ness, and right. we are the dark so our, horses of the Royalty Community Radio. Our expectations fell for ourselves. Drastically. And it made it more fun, honestly. Kind of. There's a life lesson. I'm just going to itch my belly all sh- the show. I'm sorry. There's either been like a... Is that wool? Um, no, but I have bug bites oh, up and down my tummy. I and I don't a, know where they came from. I have a story about a bug bite. I'm going to tell you later. But go ahead. Introduce the show. I was just sitting in the car and all of a sudden they started itching me. And my kid has them all over his ankles. There must have been like a new hatch of mosquitoes or something. Mm. Anyway, all right. I will introduce the show. Okay. Christina Stikos, I will. (laughs) Thank you, you, Emily Howe. (laughs) You guys have tuned into 11th Hour Radio, broadcasting live from Royalton Community Radio, WFVRLP (sighs) 96.5. FM. 
well, obviously. Is anything even on AM anymore? Yes. Is that even a thing? Why do radios even have that? Because it's a smorgasbord. I don't think there's anything on AM. It's just it's like for, dead static. No, it's for traveling west because that's when you can't get FM, you can always get AM. I, driving I don't, I don't, driving west, you need AM. I'm telling you. I don't know about that. Those long stretches of highway. Well, I'm going to thank should. our sponsors and underwriters. For okay, me. let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Howville, Howville Farms. See, we haven't done this in so long that I'm like forgetting who they are. I know one is Howville Farms. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I know we have Mountain Folk. I know we have Rivendell Restoration. Um, yeah. We put it on our podcast. Yeah, we, we do. write it in our description. We write who our sponsors are. So we do think of them every week. We just don't you know, always say it. It's hard, you know. But I guess the just, whole point is to say it, right? I guess. That's I what guess makes that's them the a point. sponsor because you say their I name. I don't know if we have any other sponsors. Is that all? Uh, they gave no. us They gave us a Mountain new Folk, one. I said. I said Rivendell. I said. They gave us a new one. I forget who it is. What? They did? And I said Howvale. Yeah. We'll have to find out. Forget it. We're just as jerky as ever. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Whoever well, you are, you're very kind to sponsor our <clears throat> show. I don't think our sponsors know they're sponsoring our show, though, right? They're just sponsoring the station no. in general. Right. And they don't listen to us, probably. Well, Todd does. Oh, Todd does. Thankfully. Occasionally. When and he can. Our, luckily, he's one of our double sponsors. So. Yeah, trip, actually I think he triple. takes us so that no one else has I think he's to. a triple sponsor. I think he's extra kind. Yeah, his painting. He's a triple, yes, he is a triple sponsor, but yeah. why? <sighs> Rivendell, Mountain Folk. <gasps> Tonbridge Grace Collective! That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel so, so accomplished right now. Yeah, for I do too. literally doing nothing with my I know. life. But I, I have to clean toilets all day. Oh God, I have to do that too. I have. S- how, many, is how many do you have? Three. I have four. Oh my God. That's a lot of toilets. Yeah, it is a lot. I'm telling you. I... I already came down here this morning to drop my kid off at school, and then I had to rush home for the farrier, and then wedding people came, and they drove all over the lawn, which they're not supposed to, but when John left this morning, he took down the, he accidentally took down the sign that says to not drive on the lawn. Uh. Then I ran down here, and now when I run back, I've got to deal with the wedding people some more, and then there's a program at school I have to go to, and then i got to go back for their rehearsal. It's just going to be a long day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not looking for, and and there will be toilet cleaning and the toilets, and I have to clean my entire house. Yeah, and there's a wedding too. tomorrow, and I'm not prepared at all. I have tons of guests, foliage people. Oh man, from out of state. Are they for my wedding? Probably not. No, just regular foliage people. No, they never. You. That's weird. No. I, you're on my list. Really? Maybe it's just outside the range of where they are looking. One town over. You're technically ten minute drive. Technically, you're two because you're. Or address is oh. really in Washington, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so itchy. <gasps> you know how, like, you feel an itch somewhere, but then you can't find it? Like, you'll itch all over well, your body, but you can't quite you get know what, the itch? You know what that is? That's hives. Oh, God. Hives is when you get really itchy well, and you can't it's probably psychological, it. actually, whatever it is. Yeah. Hives is so deep. It's like an itch that's way, way inside that you can't Great. get to. That's horrible. So. Oh, maybe it's I just stress. Once. Maybe I'm just getting stress hives. Yeah. Might be stress hives. <sighs> oh, jeez. Just what I need. Oh, you need a dumpster. <laughs> I need a don't dumpster you, for don't my you, life. Well, don't you love like seeing those huge, 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 supersized dumpsters in well, front of a house? Smell. No, I'm I do. Not. Yeah, I do a little bit. It makes my OCD soul a little cleaner. Yeah, you just know that stuff is getting ripped out. It's yeah. getting ripped out, and it's getting thrown in there, and it's eventually going to get taken away, which is a, a well, it makes my OCD thing. happy. It makes my environmentalists less happy because it doesn't seem like it's being sorted properly. You know, going, you're such a Virgo. Filling I'm starting the world with garbage. I'm starting to notice how much of a Virgo you truly are. You're just looking for ways I can be a Virgo. <laughs> you know what I learned about astrology this week? Oh, it's God, like the, the way to look at your sun sign. Is it's the nation that you come from. It's like you come from the nation of Virgo. Really think of it that way. All right. I'm thinking. Okay. Of it. Whereas your rising sign is much more personal. So what's that mean? What's the difference between Well, you? just 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 that's an easy idea to just hold with you and eventually you'll unpack it. 
You don't have to do it now. Just remember that. Okay. Well, what's your rising sign? I thought that's the same thing. No, no. No. It's well, different. What's mine? It's where the sun was coming up. It's where. It's the position where your sun was coming up. What Into what constellation? The day you were born where it's the sun sign is is different. I don't it's know what that sun is. Was. Nobody knows. They were babies. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. I don't understand this yeah. astrology talk. Don't overthink it. I'm not. I'm not even thinking. Don't overthink it. <laughs> it's okay. You know what? I can't remember who I saw and where, but they, they referenced something to do with something they'd heard you and I say on the radio show. And I suddenly wanted to tell them that our shtick on the radio is not totally our actual personalities because I felt like super, like they were talking to me, like they were reassuring me about something that I had been saying on the right, radio. Right, right, right. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not actually that dumb. I just right. play, I just play that part right. on the radio and that's my, that's my thing. Exactly. But yeah. then I just felt like, well, that's also kind of stupid. Why do I do that? So <laughs> I just I just left it. I just yeah. let them think that I really, truly was that Well, stupid. because if you, we don't want to pretend to know stuff, even if we do. Yeah, that could get us we in don't, water. I know, because as soon as you take a stand, you get in trouble. <laughs> so we kind of, no stand. we skirt <laughs> taking around here. taking a stand. Anyway. Or or we, we skirt around pretending so to actually. Curious, like We don't actually purport to know things. It's not like right? we're tremendous actors or anything, but we definitely have roles that we play here on the radio yeah. that aren't so much our actual personalities. Right. A little seditzier. Well, me anyway. Well, uh, me too you usually You usually play uh, the straight man to my like bimbo. That is usually how it works. <laughs> Occasionally well, we swap, but I, not I, often. I don't think it's exactly straight. Okay, I know, but it's like, it's but it's t- it's it's a you it's play, a you it's play a, the grounded, centered it's Earth a, Mother it's type. It's a prop. It's a prop for for you to and I play y- the the blondie moron. Yeah, I yeah. like I like that role. <laughs> you can have it sometimes. No, I'll want. I'll never <laughs> be able to do that. It just doesn't come with my territory. I don't think it would work if people could look at me at the same time. So that's why radio is a good is a good uh, conduit yeah. for this role. I think I actually was super naive as a, as a twenty year old. I'm not actually, somebody, I'm like somebody way double that. Somebody said to me when I was nineteen that I was the most naive nineteen year old they'd ever ever met. What? Who said that to you? A guy, an uh, Air Force pilot said it oh, who had an air cargo business. Why would he say that to you? He was on parole. Cause he was right. He was absolutely right. I was I was pretty naive too. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying good or bad. It's just it was true. I ran into a lot of um high school acquaintances last weekend at a at another high school uh friend's wedding that was at our place. And I think a lot of them were shocked to realize that I had turned, grown up? No, that I turned out like a, <laughs> oh, like not a complete idiot, actually. Oh, oh, I see. That you'd outgrown your awkwardness, your horrible awkwardness. Well, I don't know if that is completely and true. Your, your because glasses. I'm sure I came off as very awkward <laughs> you know, anyway. Because it was it was awkward. I gotta say, I had some very uncomfortable moments, but they <laughs> at the at And the it wedding. was even worse because mm-hmm. my sister was photographing the wedding. So the whole time she kept coming over to me and very obviously jabbing me in the ribs with her elbow and being like, hey, did you see who was here? Like, it was so obvious. <laughs> and I kept being like, Myra, yeah, okay, I'm trying to play it cool. Can you just stop elbowing me really obviously and like <laughs> right, pointing, pointing and wildly at the yeah. I'm just like, just yeah. let me pretend that we've all grown up here for a minute. Anyway. Yeah, that must have been fun though. It was after a little bit. It was perfectly fine and yeah. fun, but it was nice to have crossed that hurdle. Something that I've just sort of, I haven't really thought about because you know my class was never together enough to get like to have a reunion. Like my class has not had class huh. reunion, so I I haven't seen these people. How many kids in my class? I don't know. We had thirty five or forty. Mm. It wasn't big, but but unless they still live locally which several of them do i've not seen most of them in you know 25 years so it was it was weird you know in the back of your mind you're like oh what will happen if i ever see this or that person who i had this yeah. or that experience with a long time ago what will that feel like um and so it was kind of interesting to just wham have them all there at well, once well, what was the most exciting revelation that i'm fine 
No, but in terms of likes, <laughs> well, okay, oh. that's good. But oh, in terms certain of people don't, person, don't seem to hate me or we didn't seem to hold grudges against each other because we're um, actually adults. And yeah. I just had never seen other people in a context of a, an adult. So I just assumed that they would not have grown up. And they had. And that was nice. Okay. Was there like one particular person who was a standout? No, I mean, I did see, I did see my ex boyfriend from high school, which I thought was going to be really uncomfortable, and it was totally fine. Uh huh. And again, like I hadn't, I hadn't really spent a lot of time thinking. You yeah. know what? I, I think I thought about it a lot more like years ago when I was in an unhappy marriage because I just always was thinking about all these other unhappinesses that had like led up to that point, and I was thinking about it and dwelling about it dwelling on it a lot and then in the last like i don't know seven to ten years i really haven't thought about it at all like uh-huh. once you get to a place where you're not fulfilled but just like stable stable you're not racking your brain to try to figure out like what your problem is all the time and so you're not yeah. trying to dredge up like oh it's because of my high school relationships or oh it's because of this like once you're kind of okay with yourself i think you let a lot of that stuff go right until the next disaster. Right. Which, you know. <laughs> is always <laughs> yeah. imminent, but anyhow. It's always around the corner. Yeah, yeah, so it was cool. Surreal, but cool. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a great earworm this morning. Oh, God. Is it going to be now mine? Because I get can those you, really Can you bad. guess what it was? Can you guess um, it all? Roxanne. No, I don't know. No, what? I used to love that, actually. Now it's Climb Every Mountain. Like the Julie Andrews one? Yeah. I just was walking. Did you opera it to your cats? No, no. I I just realized it was going on in my head like a loop. Oh, yep. I, 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 my I earworms stop like with one sentence though. Like they, I don't, I wish I could do at least a whole musical verse or a phrase, uh, but instead I just, no, one I, sentence repeats over and over and over again that, until I'm crazy. I think that's an earworm actually. I don't think they can be whole verses. Oh, good. Yeah, it's like a mantra. It's, it's well, they short. say if you can force your brain through the whole song or through more of it than your earworm is giving you, then you can like you eradicate can it, get it out. Like, yeah. okay. I, know I find when I'm having them at night because that's when I have them the worst and I can't sleep when one goes over and over. Because I actually have like mild OCD, so that I really get. It's not just like a oh ha 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 that song is stuck in my head. Yeah, like it's really mm-hmm. it's like disturbing in my head. I can't sleep. I can't. Well, how anything. how would you have felt? About I will flick on a the but radio. Climb, climb every mountain, sort well, of inspirational. It's like an yeah, affirmation. That one has a good message. Yeah, it goes climb every mountain, ford every stream. For, is who it ford? ford? Who ford? Is it streams? Ford or forge? For, I guess you're not going to forge the stream. Ford. I yeah. use that. I actually use that when I song right. I use is the, the word ford, ford with a J in it. That one. Forge? Or that's like, what that's like Fjord. <laughs> There's no J in Ford. Well, there is in Fjord. You mean the truck? Oh, Fjord. Right. And I'm just thinking of like, you know, in Swiss places, there's Fjords. Yes. I'm not talking about the horse kind. I'm talking about the like... Yeah, isn't I'm ta- it another word for like a dam? Uh, oh, no. I gotta look it up. Okay. That's strange. That's a strange association. Well, that's why I, I I've always been it. screwing with that song because I'm like, is it Ford or Forge or... F- so you don't Fjord use the word Ford very much except referring to a truck. Right. Is that right? Yes. Like you haven't ever said, I'm going to Ford that stream. You never said that with your kids, like when you're uh, out in the woods. No. no. Well, oh, usually you Ford a river. Ford. A, stre- a stream. Yeah. You know, Every you can jump across... Stream. On rocks, Ford stepping, stream, stepping meaning, stones, we'll stepping, yes, stones, stepping right. stones, right? A ford is a shallow place with good footing where a river or stream may be crossed by wading or inside a vehicle getting its wheels wet. What? It doesn't always have good footing. That's why people have to make human chains a to get across to fords stone bridge. or use horses or ropes, you know, because especially when it's raining. Okay, now I'm going to look fjord. It's up. dangerous to cross a ford. That is, you know, where it's raining. Yes, there could be a flash flood. There's a lot of drama to a place of fording. Fjord now. Fjording. Oh, you're thinking. Ha, see? What? Fjord, a long, narrow, deep inlet of the sea between high cliffs. So that's why it's sort of, you know, it's another sort of water inlet 
whatever reference. That's why I'm confused. Mm -hmm. As in Norway and Iceland. Okay. Typically formed by submergence of a glaciated valley. Glaciated. But you're not confused now. No, I'm fine now. Because fords are more kind of about cowboys. Cowboys go through fords. Well, more often. More of a cowboy. Or in Alaska, you know. If you had to, uh, did you ever read that book? What was it? Out into the wild. Yes. Well, that was. Remember, he had a that fourth. That's how. He, and he got stuck. He got stuck out there, and that's why he died. I mean, that's part of, part of why he died. Didn't he get oh, stuck? Oh, I thought you were talking the- about. Oh, never mind. I was thinking you were talking about Alone in the Wilderness, Dick Prennicky in Alaska. Uh, no, you're no. talking about the the guy who lived in the school bus or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I thought he ate something poisonous. Yes, he had because he couldn't get out because he couldn't ford the river. That seems dumb he though because at the end, I think they found long. out that he had actually gone and gotten all hallucinated because he was really only like 100 feet from a road or something no. where people found him. Yes. No. Yeah, I'm going to well, Google it for you. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I was so frustrated by that yeah. because he was actually so close. If he had just gone in the right direction to people, what was it called? Um, in, into the wild. Into the wild, yeah. Is that right? Into Did he get the wild. Eaten by bears eventually, or they just found him? They found him. Into Did they the, find him? Into the wild. Okay, I read see. the book, but. I watched the movie and I think I read part of the book, but it was kind of. I, I don't think I, I, just, I couldn't watch that movie. I don't think so. Into the wild. Okay people i just want i want a spoiler here guys no i don't want to buy it on amazon i want everything like every other link goes to amazon doesn't it yeah you have to make a point of trying to shop other places you have to try to avoid it it's like a big magnet or it's like a black hole right, that well, sucks everybody down now my phone has frozen so i can't actually great sorry let's just forget okay that. forget it what were you talking about i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting off on, you know, like I get off on trades, I get off on Fords. I mean, I like, it's funny. (laughs) Maybe that's why I like Ford trucks also, because it just reverberates with that feeling of the other definition. (gasps) Ford trucks are nice. Things are like that. There's something about. The grill work is really nice. Old ones. Yeah. I mean, all old trucks, I, I feel, are very beautiful here's 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 some irony what? i would like to be rich enough so that i could buy an old truck i know me you know too. what i'm saying i just want the kind the like that i grew up with yeah those are so someday that's my goal me too because i'd too. like to drive around town i'm gonna be like i love short people i love trucks because i can see when i'm driving them i can yeah. see things like uh, people don't understand i'm just short enough that I, it's I don't know what it is. When I'm driving, I have way more blind spots than other people because I just am too short. Yeah, it doesn't help to be short in a car. And I probably could have, you know, a pillow or a booster seat or something, but that just seems stupid. Right. Well, I'm going to be like an old lady in an old truck. That sounds cool. Think about it. When you I'll see be that, because you. Lady sidekick friend. Yeah, you see that sometimes. And, like, describe to me how that feels when you see an old lady in an old truck. It's a she's... specific feeling. Like, it belongs in that book where it has lost words. Lost words are words, <laughs> words that aren't words <laughs> in English, that are words in other languages oh, or other countries. Oh, right, right. But anyway, there's a feeling associated with that. I agree. What is it? I don't know. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. We'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, you're looking at, it is time for a song. I'm not, I'm not looking at anything. No, I know, but there was a little lull. Just a lull. I was just contemplating what you had said. But it was a beautiful lull. I liked it. Well, and now we're going to segue from lull to song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This what is, are you playing for us okay. today? This is Karina. Karina. This is for uh, Laughing Crow. Here okay. we go. Gonna burn on a shoe. Baby, 
got a burn, honey got a bird will sing. Baby got a burn, honey got a bird will sing. With our Karina, sure don't mean, sure don't mean a natural thing. For money, honey, you're my woman, my baby, you're my woman, please. Classic Karina. That was recorded up at Pepperbox Studio. That would be Christina's studio. Whoops. You are now. Whoops. What happened? Wait a sec. Hold on. Not on. Not now. Uh, there. Now I'm on. Does that make you happy? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> 
I love it. Hey, you won't believe what happened to my book designer. What? You know how a kid, this book just never gets Why done. Why don't you just design it? No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the lad, you won't believe this. Okay, what? She spent last weekend in the hospital on a ventilator. What? From a spider bite. From a spider bite. Oh, I don't even want to hear that. Yeah, I'm so I'm afraid not, about I'm these kidding bites you. on I, my belly. I have to, I feel so bad for her. This is not What her. kind of spider? I don't know. I have to find out, but. Where does your book designer live? <laughs> not near you. Okay, few. No, she's like Manchester, Vermont area. Dude, it's still Vermont. We have spiders around here that can put you on a ventilator. She said, well, she said she mentioned she was allergic. So it wasn't just because she got bit by a spider. She's evidently oh allergic God. to the spider bite. I just feel so bad what? for her. That but my, still doesn't my make book sense. just is really getting held up for various reasons. Oh, well, at least it's happening eventually. Well, I, unlike yeah, but, mine that just sits dead. But it's what's, you know, it's like the goal post keeps getting moved farther and farther away. It's just like when I. Yeah, but it's like in sight still. Yeah, but it keeps moving. <laughs> I mean, it's in sight, but it keeps moving it's, away. I can't I know, ever but get... I, I, I'm not worried about your book because it's going uh, to happen. It's like, right. yours is just going to happen. Okay. You make things happen. You always do. Manifestation. Manifest destiny. So still, what kind of spider was this? Because I'm a little freaked out. I don't know. Let's just forget it. You... It's not a spider that you're ever going to see. You don't know that. Manchester, Vermont well, is not that you far Actually, from you here. have a barn. You might see it. I have a you spider look, like lurking right around just my check. sliding door. You should check your barn a little bit. There's spiders everywhere. Get a flashlight or a headlamp and go in all the corners with your broom. And if you see one, get you can get one of those have a hard traps. <laughs> there was, um, it was so dark this week. Dark at the museum. Like, oh, it, it was just dark. Is dark and it gloomy was rainy. and rainy. Yeah, and. Being a Victorian house, we've only put electricity in a couple places, and the old kitchen has no lights in it at all. So wait, wait, how do you see without I mean, there's lights? Windows, but it was just such a dark day. What do you mean? Some rooms don't even have lights. Yeah, no. no. What? It, like your museum doesn't have lights upstairs? upstairs. There's a light in each of the bedrooms. Yeah, but nothing really in the hallway. Okay. There's nothing. In the kitchen, there's nothing in our spare bedroom. There's nothing in the study at all. Oh. You just rely on window light in there. Okay. So it's very dark. And on dark days, it's really dark. And wow. I had a giant busload of Rhodes Scholar, Elder Hostel, American, whatever. I forgot what the... I forgot which their name is now, if it's Rhodes Scholars or Elder Hostel, whatever. The elderly American bus tours. And they all had to turn on their cell phone flashlights to see through the museum because it was so dark. And it was a little embarrassing. Yeah. You might want to invest in a headlamp, and we're totally dark, and you have to use a flashlight. Well, to go I'm telling the you, headlamps are just you know you love I headlamps. I use headlamps a lot. Actually. I do too on I'm a probably, daily basis. I'm probably gonna have a permanent dent in my skull from headlamps because I have to crank yeah. them down really tight. John has a huge head, and then I have a tiny head, so I always they get stretched out, and I have to crank them down really tight. When I, I wear see. Them. Yeah, I use one every yeah. day. My house is like your museum, I know. for sure, in terms of bad too, lighting. Actually, the attic, at least. And <sighs> yeah, I just need some sleep. That's yeah, have you ever heard the phrase "double dog dare"? Yeah, really, I never mm -hmm. heard it before. Here comes the train, too. Really, you never heard it? No, I have Double little spoof buttons that. Well, you know that I love to make buttons, but my button maker. I sometimes make buttons for my clogging students, and I have a button that says, I double clog dare you. Nice. Because I teach clogging. Nice. So, yeah. You know the, all the stuff I don't know. Like, if you put us, the two of us together, we kind of know a lot of stuff, but <laughs> individually, I, th I feel, always feel like you know more of the, like, no. the cool um, slang stuff. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Here there it the is. Train. You want me to like open a window or something? Could you? I guess, even though yeah, it's probably like there, 30 this degrees train. out there. Okay, it's open. Yeah, I met an engineer once. She was, uh, she was from Boston. Here you go. Might be a clown train. It might be the Barnum and Bailey circus train with the Jamaican unicyclers in it. You just what? don't know. 
Oh, I just realized one of my dancer's little kids, Max, is downstairs. I didn't know he went here. Hi, Hi Maxie. Max. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> um, wow, was I going to say? Jamaican unicyclers? Yeah, I met one. See, I don't know what you're talking about. I brought one home once. <sighs> I'm not oh. kidding you. And did he a unicycle into your heart? He did a backflip in wow. my apartment Whoa. <clears throat> from a standing position. We have a unicycle. Eli is very good at riding a unicycle, but I can't do it. Yeah. They had a unicycler come to the um, Brown Bag concert series that they have here in South Royalton on the Green on Tuesdays all summer long. And the unicycler was pretty cool because he had an extra tall unicycle that he had to like climb to get on. And then he made like a dad of one of the kids that was watching it get on his shoulders. And no. then he rode the unicycle. How could you do that? I can't dad. even imagine. Yeah, it was insane. I thought, there's no way this guy, I thought it was a joke when he was asking for how volunteers did the, and put the How did the dad get up there? Uh, he put him on his shoulders first. Yeah. And this was not like a little guy. The unicycler was littler than the he guy on his shoulders. He put a dad on his shoulders. Yep. I took a picture. I'll have to show you. And then he climbs up this crazy unicycle and, and he rides it. No. And he af this is after he made Possibly. the dad wear like a little unicorn helmet, which we all thought it was a joke because he had a done some other- unicorn helmet? Yes. We just thought he was going to be like, just kidding, man, at the You're end. Just like after all this hype. Now. No, I'm not. I took a picture and it was bizarre. You're bizarre. Here, I'll even show you. No, it just that that's impossible. Well, I just can't believe somebody did that because you know what? There are like lawsuits in this world and I like I don't care how good of a unicycler you are, you can't predict what like some random dad is gonna do up on top of your shoulders. And it would have happened in front of their child. Exactly. An and accident. Half the town. Okay, let me just look it up for you. South Unic Royalton really to going out on a limb, so well, to speak. I don't think they knew it was gonna happen, but well, it, it happened. Was, it was pretty it was pretty wild. Where was the police presence? I don't know, Christina. These things just... Oh, it's so hard to search for things on my phone. Yeah, I refuse to do that. That's why I have a computer. I'd rather carry this big old heavy dinosaur oh. computer around than a f and look at a phone. To be caught go. dead looking at a phone. Are you kidding? In a public place? I don't do it often, though. Well, I actually do do it sometimes. If I'm waiting for my chai, I might, I might look at my phone. If I'm feeling super awkward... Yeah. Well, and then I ask myself while I'm looking at my phone, I said, what would you have done before you had this phone? What would you be doing? Would you be looking into space? And then I make myself put the phone away and practice what I would do if I didn't have a phone. I, it works pretty good. Sometimes if I don't have the phone near my bed to check in the morning, yeah. I, have a, I wake up and then I think, gosh, if I just had my phone to look at for a second, then I could like put it down and go back to sleep. Do you know where the cell phone tower is? Like, um, is it right here? Is this, this cell phone oh, tower? Because it's going, that cell phone signal's going, could be going through your head into the phone. Do you ever think about that? Yeah, I'm sure it yeah, is. Think I'm about sure it. we're all getting, somebody said. Yeah, it's true. That 5G. they put some, hold on, it's not loading. It's coming, Christine, it's right here. Hold on. Um, somebody said they put a cell phone up to some like microwave popcorn and it popped it. Yeah, it's micro. Well, no, actually, or something phones like that. aren't currently microwave. I don't think. I think five G is microwave well, again, technology. You know, as everything you see on the internet is true. Why isn't this picture loading? Because you're having a problem. It's because I'm impatient. All right, I'm just gonna leave it right there. The caption is up though. Yeah. Come on. Ah, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's the picture. That's the short unicycle, though. Uh, he has another. Is it in the background? It's a huge dad. It's really quite a huge dad. And he yeah, I'm telling you. He has some kind of unidentifiable headgear, which you claim it's is a unicorn. A unicorn yeah, uh, I promise. It's a rainbow helmet. unicorn bicycle helmet. On this big dad, on this small unicyclist. Okay, the unicycle, I was kind of... Exp it's No, he has another taller one. But it was super blurry when I took that picture. Is it in the background? I don't know. I guess this is a, it's an okay way to spend time is doing <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, what would you rather be doing? Right. Oh, it's in the corner of the... I mean, it's good to occupy your... It's on the ground down there. Yeah. I mean, your children are definitely not doing drugs when they're watching a show with a, you know, a dad with a unicycle um, unicorn helmet right. on his shoulders of this True. little fellow with glasses. Anyhow, I for totally forgot. Oh, because you had a unicyclist from Barnum and Bailey's Jamaican unicyclist come into your apartment. Yeah, there was a whole team. And you think they were on the it train. Was a, it was a whole team. 
yeah, I was heading home from work. I was in Boston and I, you know, I got out of work like at one in the morning and I was standing at the North Station subway stop waiting for my train. And there he was. Just riding by you? No, he was hanging out and he invited me back to the circus train, which was Mm. behind uh, North Station. It's this big, like, this big train yard that has like a million train tracks in it. And somehow we wove in, you know, it was nighttime and we were weaving between oh, trains. Those were the days when you could go with a strange man back to this air quotes circus train. What do you mean air quotes? <laughs> it was the circus train. I'm just was, saying. Like, there was like, some pretty freaky people. You actually re- trusted some random guy and followed him back well, to that's the circus I train. Just, I just got done telling you how naive I was. Oh, I, is he the guy who said you were stupid. naive? No. Oh no, that was, that was the Air guy. Force pilot, Tony. Well, where'd you go with him in the dark? I didn't. Oh, well, why did he think you were naive then? Because I was dating his friend. <laughs> oh. And he could he could just tell what was going on, that his friend was oh. taking advantage of me, like, royally. Oh, I see. And I was starstruck. God. With little stars twinkling in my eyes. Why does that always And little ra- rainbows rising. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, those uh, were the days. The good old days. When you didn't know anything yeah. about anything. Yeah. And now we're just like shell-shocked. I know. It's My kid was just laughing hysterically in the car while he was thinking of a story to himself. And I was like, what? So funny. And he said, oh, a bunch of the guys. Uh, so apparently, you know, it's high school now. So a bunch a bunch of the teachers has like have like condoms and stuff in their room to give to kids if they think they're being unsafe or whatever. Or just that kids can come and get so they know. Like, here's a safe place you can come and get contraceptive. Anyway. Like, every teacher? Nah, I don't know. Like I, your I English, didn't ask your all these English questions. English teacher has condoms now? No, but the Spanish teacher, who might know. Why? I the know. Spa- isn't there, like, a sex ed or a health teacher that <laughs> might have Spanish, condoms? Whatever. I'm sure that there's condoms in other places. But anyway, Why he was laughing. Why Hispanic condoms? No. Is this- I don't know. I okay. didn't ask what brand they were. All right. And, and I was... Anyway, he was laughing, and I said, what's so funny? And he was like, oh, a bunch of the guys stole a couple tubes of lube <laughs> and they squirted it all over the hallway and then people fell down. And it's, I was like, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to see if it's say which school this is. Cause we probably get sued. Well, I'm not first gonna, of all, I don't get why. Whatever. I'm glad you have condoms for kids, but why do kids need lube? <laughs> I mean, kids are pretty moist. I don't know. I mean, I, frankly, uh, you could, I mean, I have a lot of moisturizer at home. <laughs> no, but not the kind you put. I have like it's not internal Crabtree and Evelyn. That's got perfumes. You don't put it. It's yeah, it's but it has external use only. But it has I'm lanolin. Saying, no, I'm just saying I like moisturizer and I like this gardener's. Um, I'm not talking about moisturizer. Well, I'm I just thought we lube. could like gently switch the subject. Oh, all right, you don't have to do it gently. You can just for- like throw on the brakes and be like, <laughs> not talking about lube. <laughs> okay. No, but I just, it's funny that you brought this up because I just got some really nice hand moisturizer <laughs> from, like, filled with flower essences. And I had By to order way, it. By the way, Crabtree and Evelyn have com- chemicals, I think. You I know, probably not have I that. know, but they have the strongest, like, lanolin content. You can just come and rub my sheep. For, if you rub the sheep, you can get, you get it all wanna, over your hands. I don't want to rub your sheep. It's nice. I mean, I, if, I, if I'm going to bed at night, I don't want to have to come over and rub your sheep. I could give you one temporarily for the winter well, and maybe, you could just keep possibly. it in your wood shed and rub it sometimes okay maybe when you feel I'll like th- you're getting I'll, chapped i'll think about it okay okay all right what are you gonna Next play song, now this is a uh, david carpenter bunch of fiddle tunes so. i know him i think yeah he's from up north like uh what's the town callis uh, no marshfield or somewhere oh right right know, somewhere like that Here david go. carpenter the farmer right yeah yeah i know him
Thank you, David. Nice. And Ken, that harmonica player, I think his name is Ken. I haven't seen him for years, but used to play with those guys sometimes. Cool. Yeah, fun, 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 <sighs> fun, fun. I did not dribble toothpaste on my body today because I only do that if I'm wearing black. Okay. That's the deal. Score. I, I just decided that I can't wear black anymore because on the days that I wear black, all the toothpaste comes out of my mouth and somehow manages to get all dribbled down my shirt. So. Well, I think you just don't notice it when you're not wearing black no, and you're still drooling. I think I don't drool. No, you were drooling last week. <laughs> sometimes. All right. Sometimes I drool. Not when I'm brushing my teeth. I'm focused when I'm brushing my teeth. Well, you have a thing about your mouth. You know what? I, I haven't just, flossed for a couple of days, which I never don't floss. I always floss. You, and for the last couple of days, I've just been so tired that I've just dropped in bed and I've not flossed my yeah. teeth. And it's Wait weird. till you get to be my age. Then you're going to skip some days. Well. You know, you can only go for like 20, 25 years doing it every day. And then one day you wake up and you just say no. <laughs> just like Nancy Reagan did. Well, do you have tight teeth? I have some tight, some loose, and some missing. You it's a real grab missing. bag. You have that one that was taken out way in the back that nobody can see that you are always obsessively talking about. Yeah, that, that has the titanium platform, which is probably picking up signals from, you know, satellites from Skynet. That's true. Yeah. I'm a little worried about what's you coming into like my brain. You could be like a communication brain. center for yeah, the aliens I know. that you love so well, much. Well, I probably that's probably part of my problem. It, it could be why you are into yeah. them. Things seem yeah. inexplicable. But when you really get down to it, there's just stuff we don't know about that's happening to us. Is that door, I mean, is that window open over there? Look at the curtain. It's just blowing. Oh. <laughs> is it? Could be. Because it's like. Are you chilly? Cold outside. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Do you want a spelling word? All right. I have a red pen today. Oh, you do? And okay. a pencil. Ready? I don't know whose pencil this is. Predicament. Predicament. How'd you know it was pre? I tried to say it to stump you. I said predicament because that's how I say that word. Per, you said per. I did. I said predicament. Predicament. But you immediately corrected it and you said predicament. Well, I got Very it. Very astute. Until the k. It's P R E D I C. I don't know the next one. E M E N T. I don't know. That's not where I expected you to fall. It's an A. Sorry. K. Okay, second word, requiem. Requiem. Yeah, this screwed me up. This screwed me up. R-E-Q-U-I-E-M. Oh, good for you, man. You're a genius. You probably like... So they say. Yeah. Have you heard of the requiem for broken needles? No. In Japan, because they still sew kimonos with... uh, by hand with needles. And so at the end of the year, they have this annual ritual where they sort of honor all the broken needles. What? It's called a requiem for the broken you know needles. What? Hand needles don't break that often. It's sewing machine needles that snap. They're made of like cheaper metal or well, something. Well, think of kimonos and how thick some of that fabric is. It's yeah. almost like upholstery fabric, some of it. But it's often silks and stuff that go through very easily. I, I don't know. I don't know. What about royal kimonos? That are for royalty. What about the belt like, thing? Those obies or whatever they're called, the big thick belts that you have to twist around. Those are pretty thick. I'd like to wear that. Did you know that the little socks they wear for those those sandals, the socks are like flip flop socks. Like they're made. They have a divider between your toe and the rest of your. That's cool. Toes. Did you see the cat in the flip flop? No. You would love this video. It's just like the shortest thing. It's almost as short as a gif. Is it sleeping? It's all of a sudden, it's 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 shot down at ground level. And all of a sudden, this flip-flop comes flying towards with a cat stuck its head in. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. It doesn't look like a serious what situation. What do without cat videos? It's just funny. Cats oh are so, 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 so funny. What did they do before cat videos? I guess everyone just had to talk about their cats more. Yeah, I think so. Someone's car alarm's going off, but... See, that's a good thing about having a wicked old car. You never have that panic of like, oh, is it me? Like, I never have to worry. I don't think I've ever had a car with oh, a car you know, alarm. Oh, you know when my alarm goes off? Mm-hmm. It's so funny. It's when I park over at the Valero station. 
Okay, if I pull in in front, you know what I'm talking about. It just turned oh yeah, it just turned it to turned that. into a Valero from a something I've else. Never like even a heard shell. of that kind of gas. Uh, I still call it the mobile station because that's what it was when I was in like in that's high three three times ago. It was it was shell and then it was mobile. Okay. I still call it the mobile station. Yeah, but I'm trying to retrain myself because it screws people up who I'm giving I directions guess. to. You could just say the gas station. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's I pretty much the I, only one around. Well, so. if I park in front of the stone wall, mm-hmm. oh, then my uh, my car opener doesn't work. Like I Why? click it and click it and click it, and it doesn't work. And so I go to the back. If I go to the back hatch and I open it, because that doesn't lo- ever lock. Like that's an <clears throat> right. never, never locks. And I open it, then the car alarm goes off. Weird. Why? Well, because I have, that I have wall? a we I have a bunker for. It's like electronics for you. That's really weird. It's, you know, it's like AI. The car is kind of doing its own thing now. As it ages, it, it takes on its own a system. engineer working around my museum a couple of weeks ago. And her, she was trying to figure out some of the drainage issues that we have there. And every five minutes, like clockwork, her car alarm would go off for about 30 seconds and then it would stop. Huh. And it did it all day. And she, it was like she didn't even notice. It made me crazy because I, I wanted her to be like, sorry, my car alarm's broken or maybe I'll just unlock she my just, car. She took it in stride. And it's just kind of annoying because it was right in the middle of a tiny village and all day long, every five minutes, it just went huh. off. For, and she for ignored how, it. For how many years was this? No, I didn't say years. She was there all oh. day. Oh, I see. I just day. thought it was like your neighbor no, who but it just like got had to be kind of unsettling to have a car alarm go off. Every five minutes. You know what that reminds me of? When I used to teach guitar down at Hanover Strings. Yeah. And we used to park, you know, I'd park in the city. And then every two hours, because the meters were only like two hours long, you would have to go out and you'd either have to have a very highly developed internal alarm system or you'd have to set a timer Hmm. to go out and feed your meter. They should have some override for people who like work there and have to be there all day because what are you supposed to do? It was a bad system. You're supposed to park outside of town. That's what you're supposed to do. But if you work there, like, yeah, it's a big pain. It's against the working person. So much. Thank God we work for ourselves, Emily. (sighs) Yeah. It's so great. (laughs) (laughs) Even though we have erratic income, I'm telling you. Erratic? Try like non-existent at the moment. But the variety of the things (sighs) that we get to do, like going from cleaning toilets to, you know, uh, you know, having a recording session to like beautifying somebody's garden and then. I uh, you know baking pies and then invoicing and paying bills and 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 why and, do the hardest jobs in the world get paid the least? That's just a very odd. Oh, phenomenon. back to back to toilets, right? I'm not toilets. I I gotta say toilets aren't hard. They're just kind of disgusting. Like, well, I wish they would just improve on the on the brush. There's just nothing. The brush. It's not a difficult task. It's not like it's. You know, exhausting if you, or anything, if you, you're just kind of grossed out what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, but if all. you put any muscle into the brushing, yeah. those brushes break. The handles just break. I right know. Off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you're like, am I too cheap to go buy a new one? It's right. like getting a cat pooper scooper. You don't want to go spend well, like $3 on something like you that. You could just also not use the brush at all. Just fill your toilet with vinegar and walk away for a couple hours really? and come back and flush it and it's perfectly spotless. Oh, why don't I try that? Yeah, you don't have to brush it at all. Is that what you do? Yeah. Is that what you call cleaning a toilet? It's totally clean when you're done. I promise. Do you use a brush? Nope. You don't have to. Are you kidding me? No, you didn't know this. Why don't people tell me these things? I'm telling you now. Fill your toilet with some vinegar. I have a Leave huge it. thing of vinegar. I mean, if you want to speed the process up, you can brush it around, but you just pour some in there. So it's like, you know, half vinegar, half water, because there's already water in your toilet, I assume. Leave it for a couple hours. Flush it, and your toilet is pristinely clean. <laughs> This is the most useful thing that you've said all day. That's probably true. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think that actually that qualifies not as misinformation. No, that is as totally for, true. And I learned uh, that from a friend who is a house cleaner who doesn't use any chemicals. Nice. And when she's cleaning a house, she the first thing she does when she gets there is fill the toilets with the vinegar. And then she does all the cleaning. And before she leaves, she flushes the toilet and she's done. Is that Kendra? No, it's her sister. Oh, fantastic. I don't know. Anyhow. That's good. 
Good stuff. Is it the sunshine? Oh, God, I hope so. Yeah. I'm so not looking forward to going home and setting up a wedding in the muck and darkness yeah. and cold oh, so, and rain. So I had guests from New Jersey last weekend. Yeah. And of course, what happened, right? It was, um, I don't know what happened. Well, first of all, they, you know, they kept telling, they kept texting me their ETA. Oh, we'll be there by 10. Oh, looks like more like midnight. Oh, not won't be there till 1 30 so oh i'm gonna stay God. up till 1 30 turns out they're super 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 nice people which was good that was the saving grace but next day next morning i had to go somewhere so i just said look you know you can let yourselves out leave the door open whatever mm-hmm. so i leave and then you know i go about my business and then i come back at like five in the afternoon and all of a sudden all the text messages that they've been sending me start coming in bing 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 because oh, no. i you know turns out they when they went out my driveway they didn't turn right like they should have they turned left what yeah so guess what happened to them they're yeah. stuck yeah they got stuck <laughs> down pepper road why yeah. would they go left i know i know i know because i gave i give everybody these like huge warnings like do not go well well i yeah. just nobody would go left it doesn't even look like a road it looks like a little path through the Woods. I know. And at one thirty in the morning, the you night really before, pull out of your listen, driveway and did. be like, "Oh, should I go on this nice packed road, or should I go into this little trail in listen, the woods?" They texted me at one thirty in the morning, and they said, "We think we're here, but there's just leaves. Like they're at my mailbox. They they haven't. All the lights are on in my house, but they're stuck at the mailbox because all they see is leaves. So I had to walk out at one thirty in the morning to like bring them wow. in, just like a tugboat. It's like another world people are from. Yeah. We got to get off the air. Okay. What are you going to play as we leave? Uh, let's see. What do I have here? I have something from Gold Town called Rutland. It's a song called Rutland, Rutland. from Gold Town. They're from Rutland Vegas. Rut Vegas. So All thanks right. for listening, Bye everyone. you guys. Thank you so much. And we will be back next Friday at 11 a.m. Yeah. Have Enjoy a, Have a fantastic weekend. weekend. Okay. Bye. Bye. There ain't no sun of Rutland. When the darkness sets, the rain will start to sink. And your heart, it fights like a canyon. Little dog, don't you cry over me. And I feel like a flicker of light on the ball. The sun fights the whole day in place. I hope my love will let her breathe. Each exhale and tie in the scene. Rain on sun over Rutland When the darkness sets the rain will start to sink And your heart it fires like a candy Little dog, don't you cry over me You took love no from the hall You walked outside into the floor Better face the old new be alone or be